construction site is, a, what would you say, 19, 20, 20 miles? 20 miles from Lake Superior? Okay. That, that is unbelievable proximity to the lake. When you look at the Iron Range, some of those mines and, and their pollution plumes have had devastating effects on wild rice and other uh, ecosystem factors over the course of 100 miles of drainage, right? Mm -hmm. St. Louis River used to be loaded with wild rice and, and, and all of the, the things that come with, you know, wild rice beds. That, that's a, a wild rice dead zone uh, pretty much right now. This, this map actually is a good one to capture it with the, the Bad River Watershed. This, this is from the USDA, the feds right here. Okay. Ma'am, you, you, you're going to want to take a good look at this. I'd like you to, to see that. Here's, here's the St. Louis watershed and the, and the pollution plume of, 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 you know, 60 to 100 miles before it reaches Lake Superior. Look at the downstream waters over that long of a distance, and what do, we, what do we see here? St. Louis watershed, mercury, we see a bunch of different contaminants, we see essentially impaired uh, waterways, mm -hmm. impaired being a classification that um, acknowledges those water systems are in trouble and polluted, right? And, uh, and that's over the course of that, that much distance. One of the reasons GTAC dropped the solution to pollution is dilution is because in their project, this is them, this is Lake Superior. Too close to the two, the, the, what they What they originally touted as something that was gonna be such a great thing, mm -hmm. really means that all their toxicity that they know they're gonna unleash, they understand it's going whoosh right into Lake Superior. Once yeah. it gets to Lake Superior, who cares about it? There's, it's, it's, it's solved. The lake is yeah. so vast it can't possibly be hurt, right? Mm -hmm. Part of, you know, the, the PR campaign of the mining company right now is to tout themselves as the only possible source of science. Tom Fitz has been, uh, they've tried to discredit Tom Fitz as a career geologist at North College. The Republicans and the mining company um, have both taken swipes at uh, career geologists um, from Lawrence University. Dr. Bajorud. Yeah, um, uh, Dr. Bajorud. They've, they've made their, their life's work studying the Pinocchi Hills, not just geologists in the field, right? They have made their life's work and their, their, their whole academic career centering around research in the Pinocchis. Mm -hmm. They both say the same things. Sulfuric acid mine drainage, uh, sulfate pollution, uh, greenerite asbestos, and you better do your homework. They, they haven't been anti-mine. What they've done is they've talked science. The mining company has attacked them. The mining company attacked um, Jason Huberty, who worked with the Wisconsin Geological Service, who showed up doing FOIA requests and stuff down in Madison. Mm -hmm. Senator Tom Tiffany wants to know all about this, this geologist in the Wisconsin Geological Service named Jason Huberty, because Jason Huberty had the gall to do a science analysis and say what you have here is granite asbestos, a very carcinogenic rock. Telling the truth. And all of a sudden he's in trouble. Yeah. And now he no longer works for them. Right? Mm -hmm. Well <clears throat> that type of stuff is going on because the mining company wants to convince the public that they are the carriers of true science. And once we as a mining company get this information, we will tell you how safe this is how we're going to do this safely, how this is going to be environmentally responsible. But we need to collect the science first, mm -hmm. and we are the ones who, who uh, can do that. What we're saying is, is active scientists up there. Uh, the very notion that, that you can walk land that you have slated for explosion as though you're doing some type of environmentally responsible, safe approach is, is number one, inherently flawed. Number two, they're gonna keep their vision particularly restrained to that footprint of where they plan to explode. When you can see a huge watershed that has been impaired, generally speaking, from mining activity, it ain't just gonna be, we're gonna do this safely and, and we're gonna keep our footprint up in the Pinocchi Hills. What we're going to see is, is a toxicity plume that's going to have ramifications for people and animals and plants 
uh, all the way out into the exterior. And, and the other thing about that science, take a look at these two watersheds, one based in, in mining activity and the other one that is the bad river watershed, currently pristine. If, if you look closely and read the, the tables, mm -hmm. impaired waterways, mercury pollution, and yada, 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 all of these waterways, outstanding or exceptional water resource designation from the state and feds. And, and that, that's the hard part. It's like uh, we're not talking about mining in, in, in a place that has been compromised. We're talking about mining in an absolute, absolutely beautiful, pristine area. I would argue that one of these places that is so uh, important it shouldn't ever be mined, regardless of the fact that there happens to be metal in the ground there. And, and, that, and that's a philosophical debate that, that others could have. The big picture is, just because a place has a resource that might be useful, is that inherently slated for destruction? I mean, because really, the city of Hurley is sitting on top of, of mineral deposits. Will they mine and that now? Will they mine? Well, will they? Maybe. Possibly. No. Capital, capitalism will continue to take us on a course where what town more moved? and more and more Minnesota and more. Hitting. Yeah, what Minnesota town was well, moved? Nobody in my neighborhood owns their mineral rights. Right, but do you remember which town? And was it Hibbing yes. that moved? I think Hibbing on the range. Yeah, moved. they moved to the town. Yeah. So, yeah, they'll move the town. So some of the early rumblings from the Republican legislatures at the start of the mining issue were related to the rerouting of the Bad River as though mm -hmm. that was going to be an answer. It's Let's just like, reroute the like bad river. Mr. Tiffany would come up with. It, it's sound, it sounds like, mm -hmm. like something that's Frankenstein-ish. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's also like when you talk about the headwaters area, so, so the, the tailings are within a couple miles of the, the headwaters of the bad river where it, where it starts, and, and you have thousands of acres of Nature Conservancy land and DNR land that has been bought up as conservation efforts, because because it's been known how important that area is mm -hmm. as a recharge for for the headwaters, and that headwaters are the most critical places to preserve within systems. If you screw up the headwaters, you screw up the whole river, the whole way. and that's how that's how sure. anti deg rules work through you know federally, and how the state has to uphold those. It's mm -hmm. it's the further downstream you get the more you can screw it up, because generally speaking, if you look at the Wisconsin River, by the time it's down south of Portage, it's been pretty screwed up by a lot of paper mills. Well, it's a lot easier to dump stuff in down there than it would be up here where it starts.